Now then, as part of this solar inverter general information series that um, whenever I come across uh, an inverter that I haven't done a video about I will do a brief description. This is a an SMA part of the HF series and it's an SB 2000 HF so HF stands for high frequency so unlike the the SB 1700 that we looked at a while ago this one is not transformer based so it's somewhat lighter and it has slightly different features so this is the DC disconnect okay Hopefully we can see this, yeah, yeah, there's the DC disconnect and we have this fan here as well, yeah. Okay, so what have we got down there? We have got, again, the ubiquitous round three pin mains connector instead of one of those strange um, little round four pin connectors on the SB but we still have sun clicks um, connectors they're an MC4 style but they won't inter they won't connect with any other style so there you go we've talked about those before maximum 700 volts maximum power point DC is 175 to 560 nominal AC out 2000 watts at 50 or 60 cycles there you go so I've just turned the DC up Three hundred volts on the uh, the DC, so we can turn that down a little bit. Two hundred and thirty-seven on the AC. They always take a while to get going. Just tap like that and the, the screen comes, uh, the backlight comes on. So you have G83 stroke 1. So it will take a couple of minutes to uh, decide it wants to um, do anything. And of course we see 20,465 kilowatt hours that it's produced. So that's 20 megawatts. And there you go, there it's running, and the um, the MPP, the tracking, is just sorting itself out. Balancing the input voltage and the input current. Okay, so that's the screen. I think you tap it and it changes this uh, this graph. There's a little symbol there showing tapping. 
but I don't think it changes any of this okay let's just have a look at a few other features so the top comes off but before we do that it's a fully cast bottom and luckily I've got a I'm just trying to remember how this goes there we go that is the uh, the mounting bracket so those two bits go there and this bit here goes between there and there so it can't slide sideways okay and then you have these mounting holes there so that's the uh, the mounting bracket so now let us turn it over again and get an allen key and undo the top right those are those two undone and those two undone and the top comes off and there's not a lot to see let's move in a bit right well what have we got that looks like a capacitor block down here we have got the varistors and they're the they're the ones that um, sense when they're over voltage and uh, shut the machine down apparently they're a wear part but um, if you don't go over voltage then they're not and you can put a little screwdriver down in there and it unclicks each leg I've never had to change any in the past here's the DC in and on this side there's the AC in the live and neutral are there and they feel like they're soldered direct to the board doesn't feel like a spade connector there and then of course we've got the um, the display board not a lot more that you can see loads of screws if you wanted to take this board out I'm assuming any um, relays again are underneath here so not quite so easy to get to like some of the other um, inverters where you can just get to the relay straight away but I've not had a problem with relays on these maybe the capacitors that um, uh, reduce the spark across the uh, the DC contacts are a lot better who can tell right there you go just one interesting thing let us zoom down on this these round pin plugs this black one fitted easier than the is that grey or is it green I don't know yeah and if you look right down in there right down in the bottom there there are those little lugs and then that one they're in a slightly different place to that they're on the outside of these round pins but so that one was harder to fit than that one and I don't know whether it's to do with those little pins or not but it did fit had to push just a bit harder uh, but and as you've seen it did work so there you go not bad in fact it was one of these that we used on the that water wheel over at Bourne 
uh, and I will put a link to the series of videos that we did about that because we did um, got called out there and had some strange arrangement with a hugely um, I can't remember it was something like 173 to 1 gearbox um, and a generator that had to be excited via the mains through capacitors so we ended up using a uh, a permanent magnet AC no permanent magnet three phase DC generator from one of those B and Q bolt it on the side of your house wind turbines remember those oh 20 years ago now the sort that designed to give you insomnia um, anyway we've got a generator one of those they're one kilowatt um, through a three phase rectifier into one of these into the grid so um, and behave very nicely as far as I'm aware it's still working yeah, I ought to check out at, at some point actually um, but I'll, I'll um, put the link up there at the end of this video interesting you know we did the experiments with load and uh, gearing and all sorts of things and I think if I was to do it again I would use these flat multi V belts like washing machine belts or like car um, ancillary belts nowadays you can get a huge ratio um, on one belt like it's easy to get 10 to 1 and of course it's only the small pulley that needs the grooves the big pulley as proved with my Denby drill which is downstairs um, yeah, you don't need any teeth or anything or grooves on the big pulley just a flat pulley will do really well anyway so there you go multiple uses the quite half decent machines and I will catch up with you soon cheers for now